Mini episode 75 of the FDH Lounge is brought to you by Sportsology, delivering unconventional columns and webcasts about sports, TV, music, movies, and more. Follow them on the web at sportsology.info. A long time ago, on a gloomy, wet Cleveland spring night, two men stand alone amidst the late night drizzle. Their voices echo across the vacant station parking lot as they debate the merits of the great American radio show that have been missing for far too long. On that night, an idea was born. That idea became the FDH Lounge. Welcome to the FDH Lounge. We're here with uh, Ken Palmer from uh, Giant Insider. It's FDH Lounge mini episode number 75. Rick Morris and Ken Palmer Breaking down now the Super Bowl uh, that the uh, Giants are going to be involved in. Of course, the big rematch with the Patriots. Uh, Ken covering the uh, the Giants. I guess I'll I'll start on the obvious question here, uh, Ken. Uh, the the run that the team has been on is very similar, at least in a surface sense, to four years ago, uh, as well as uh, one could say uh, the one that the Packers went on uh, last year. Ironically, the, uh, the the Packers who went down at the hands of the Giants a couple of weeks back. What are the key differences and the key similarities as you see them between now and them? I, I know that one of the key differences would be a tremendous turnover in personnel, or per- personnel, but a lot of the key players remain the same. So differences and similarities to four years ago with this matchup. I just think that they've gotten stronger in, in a couple key areas. You know, that team, that team four years ago, they had the pass rush going all season long. You know, that was a staple of that defense. We're going to come after you. We're going to sack you. We're going to hit your quarterback. Whereas that that wasn't this Giants defense until recently. It's only been the last couple regular season games and, and now the playoffs that they've been able to kind of unleash that pass rush attack. And on the flip side, the running game. The Giants had a much better running game four years ago. This year it's kind of been stubbing its toe, but it's gotten better. They You know, they had 170 late in the year. Um, and then, and then in these, these recent playoff games, they've been able to run the ball better, I think, as the offensive line gets more comfortable together, grows more cohesive. So to me, they're, those are two key, you know, roads to success, rushing the passer and, and running the football. And they're two things this Giants team hasn't had most of the season, but they sure as heck have them both going right now. Oh, they do. They do. Uh, the other thing uh, I, I'd like to ask about, because uh, certainly uh, if, if it's a big deficiency in the Super Bowl, uh, the, the team's not going to much of a to win. The secondary. The secondary really has not looked good for, for a good chunk of this year, and that's not a good thing to say about a team that's going to be going up against the Patriots with the, uh, the Tom Brady attack. Granted, they can't stretch the field like they did four years ago with Moss, but they, they just kill you on uh, the underneath stuff with the tight ends and Welker in the slot. How do you see the secondary standing up to them? Yeah, I mean, they've done a better job, but it's coincided with the pass rush. You know, it's a, it's a lot of, you know, Rick and I could play corner if, if the quarterback's <laughs> getting sacked after two, you know, after two-step drops. So it, it all runs together, and, and they have been doing a better job. But like I said, it's, it's kind of a lot of the factor is that the quarterbacks had less time to throw. To me, a big uh, – Big big matchup. This this game is going to be the linebackers and and the two tight ends because the Giants have done a great job shutting down tight ends recently, but they've been able to do it by alternating Matthias Kiwanuka and Michael Boley. Kiwi's bigger, tougher, stronger, but not as athletic and quick. Boley's very quick and instinctive, but not as big and strong. Instead of being able to alternate these guys, you're going to need them both. You're going to have them both lined up on these tight ends um, because you can't afford to use Antrell Roll in that spot because you need him in the secondary. You need him to help out on a Wes Welker type of thing. So to me, the you know, obviously it's, it's, it's no breaking news to say that the, the Patriots' two tight ends have been a matchup nightmare this year, but it, it may be an exceptional nightmare for the Giants because they have been able to shut down tight ends by alternating their linebackers but now by splitting the two out on the two guys, I think you're, it's going to be a lot tougher for them to kind of kind of shut them down. Yeah, that uh, that sounds about right. It's, that's going to be uh, certainly one of the two or three most critical matchups of the Super Bowl is uh, seeing what happens with that uh, awesome pair of tight ends. i got to tell you, too, as somebody who's on his I Told You So tour about uh, Jason Pierre-Paul, 
are, are you hearing uh, from any uh, Giants fans, or are you hearing from uh, anybody who's admitting that they were against the pick? Because I remember looking at the message boards when he was drafted, and if people are intellectually honest, uh, quite frankly, in that fan base, they have a lot to apologize for right now. Or is everybody trying to pretend that they were in favor of the pick all along? <laughs> well, that's that's usually you you know that's that's the general fan consensus at, anyway. <laughs> you'll you'll find Giants fans now that after they lost to the Redskins that fall to seven and seven and everyone was called for the coach's job. You'll find people out say, "Oh no, I knew they could go to the Super Bowl. I knew they had it in them." So you and I know that, and, and most fans know that that's absurd too. Most fans are honest with themselves, but uh, you know, I it's funny with Pierre Paul. There, there's a, a gentleman, and I, I hope, uh, hope against hope he's listening right now. I won't name him, but he knows who he is. That writes into my paper all the time. And did he ever bash me all off season, early in the season, after the preseason, <laughs> for saying how good Pierre Paul was? Don't put him in Canton yet. This guy's not going to turn out to anything. He had a good preseason game. What's the difference? And I mean, you know, I'm, I'm not an I told you so guy, but in this case, absolutely I told you so. And I know you were you were a fan of him too. And the best thing about Pierre Paul right now is he's going to get better because as teams adapt to him, he's also adapting to the league. This guy has so little football, you know, background that, that he's still learning the game and he's still learning blocking tendencies and what he can get away with and, and different things like that. So, you know, a lot of people are kind of figuring – all right, well, the league's going to catch up to him, but uh, but he's, you know, he's still catching up to the league at this point, and, and, and I could see him getting a lot better. He's been, he's been tremendous as a pass rusher, but he's been very impressive stopping the run as well. So the Giants, uh, yeah, they sure as heck hit it big there. There's no doubt about that, Rick. Yeah, they really did. Uh, Ken, it's always a pleasure to uh, catch up with you, uh, my friend. Uh, the, the old cliche, the best of times. The worst of times. Uh, your Giants are in the Super Bowl. I know you're going to have a great time covering them uh, next week. Uh, but uh, on top of that, and more importantly, uh, condolences on the passing of your friend Joe Paterno. Thanks for uh, sharing all your perspectives on everything today, my friend. You bet, Rick. Always a pleasure. And uh, look forward to wrapping with you again soon. Enjoy the Super Bowl, buddy. I certainly will, Ken. I certainly will. Maybe we can get you back on sometime in draft season here. Thank you, as always. Stay well, pal. Be good. You too, Ken. Appreciate having you on, as always. Our good friend, Ken Palmer, everyone. It's been a pleasure having him on the FDH Lounge.